All right, everybody, we're back on uh, Skywatchers Radio right here live on the Dark Matter Radio Network. Of course, also on PSN Radio. Check us out on skywatchersradio.com. Without further delay, we have our guest of the evening, Mr. Preston Pete, is on the line with us. Preston, welcome to the show. Thank you for being on with us on Skywatchers Radio, my friend. I'm good evening, Angel. Thanks for having me, Alan. Thank you, both of you, for having me on tonight. No worries. Definitely. My pleasure. Now, uh, we're going to get into a, a lot of conversation when it comes to ancient aliens tonight. And I know you have, uh, you've written about the subject. I want to first uh, get, uh, you know, your information to the audience of, you know, your work before we, we delve into uh, some of the misconceptions within the ancient alien theory. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about your background before we start up on the actual uh, ancient alien stuff. Well, I want to make it understood that I'm the editor of this book, Ancient Aliens, Lost Civilizations, Astonishing Archaeology, and Hidden History, The Disinformation Guide to. Right. And I'm the editor, so I I both contributed and collected all of the other contributors to the to the, the compendium. And um, my background is really as an investigative journalist, um, mainly focused on the war on drugs, but I also focus on a lot of other fringe, uh, not status quo, uh, really uh, followed topics. You know, I'm, I'm a big conspiracy buff and researcher. I've done a lot of work in that, in that field. And UFOs naturally attract my attention, and ancient aliens is a topic that ties right into my other interests in, in, in mysteries of, of archaeology and ancient civilizations. So I'm always fascinated by the topic, and I've been fascinated by the topic since I was a little kid. You know, I remember being fascinated with the whole uh, aliens bringing people back that they had abducted in in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I remember seeing that as a as a elementary school student, and just being fascinated with it. And Eric Van Donneken was was pretty prominent in my life around the same time. I was just becoming aware of of his Chariots of the Gods and you know, related topics like that. Nazca lines were another fascinating idea for me. So that really, really lit into me at a young age. And as I got older, I, you know, I, I got the opportunity to, to, to collect the work of some of my favorite writers in the, in the field of lost civilizations, as well as ancient aliens and, and ancient mysteries. And uh, for the, my publisher, Disinformation, who had published my first book, which was on a completely unrelated topic, but also a, a fringe unaccepted at that time, particularly. It's not quite as controversial now with all the pot legalization going on, but uh, it was pretty yep. controversial at the time. Let me tell you, and I still remember people asking me, do you really think marijuana is going to be legal in our lifetime? And me being hesitant to say yes. <laughs> you know, if they're saying, answering like I wish, you know, I hope and I, you know, optimistically, I certainly hope so, but I don't want to like say for sure. So when I, when I had the opportunity to put this book together, I, I leapt at the opportunity. That's really my background. I I don't have any formal training in ufology, say, or even archaeology. I just have a, a vast appetite for knowledge and I'm a voracious reader and have been since I was a, also a little kid. And reading was my very first addiction, and I've never tried to kick it, and I never will. I'm self-taught individual. Um, now, what what so are I, some of your what are some of the favorite, like the stories that really caught your eye? Uh, the Nazca lines, which what was like the the one story that when you were a kid you're like, damn, that that's got to be. Well, yeah, uh, when I was a kid, the the Albeck. The Chilithon, Baalbek, those three massive stones in the Sun Temple. I believe it's the Sun Temple. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of people say, oh, the Romans put that there. And as a matter of fact, in the ancient aliens to Bunks, he ascribes it to Romans, and I disagree. I disagree hardly. And I want to say for the record that as much as I, like I told you last time we, we spoke, the, the, the segment on, on the, the Renaissance paintings in that movie, I was fascinated by it, and I, as I, as I mentioned to you, I really learned some stuff in that because I'm not classically trained in the arts, you know, classical painting. I don't know, you know, diddly about that topic. Hmm. So it was really nice to find out that indeed there are 
representations of what to look for all the world to me to be UFOs and people even in the background pointing at them and their dog looking at the UFO hovering in the background of the painting. But that's in so many scores of paintings, apparently, and that, that was an actual representation of John the Baptist or uh, Jesus or whatever they were representing with that specific right. symbol in the painting. It wasn't such a, 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 you know, such an outlandish thing after all. But while I put a lot of credence into his theory on that or his, his explanation for that, I'm still dumbfounded at the idea that he spent three and a half hours belittling other people's belief systems and their, their desire to believe in ancient aliens and then turned around and appeared to me to put it down to well, actually, there were angels. They were talking about angels. If you read the Bible, the Bible says that these are angels. These were not aliens. These were angels. And he really made a real Christian slant to it, which is fine. I don't have anything against the Christian slant. I just thought it was interesting that he spent so much time saying this belief is wrong because you must believe in this story. Because I think there's just as little proof concrete proof for his version of events as there are for well this goes, version that of goes events. back to like in, the in question that, that goes back to like the question of what are angels in the bible or were right, they misidentified right. aliens you know just uh, you know they thought right. they were angels or spiritual or some kind but... right right it all depends on your interpretation right you know and how much you know like who was it Carl Sagan that said things that we don't understand like science today would be magic to people in the past and right. you know in our future things that are just commonplace will seem like magic to us you know technologies you know teleportation would seem magic to me you know right. if we somebody if, from one one room to the next you know or from one one country to the next you know that Star Trek would seem magic to me right you know uh, just like my cell phone would seem like magic to you know to wild uh, you know uh, wide herb you know so can you imagine can you imagine like building a time machine going back just a hundred years and taking back like an iPad or, or a tablet or a smartphone and you know, obviously it won't work back then you know you won't be able to call anybody but uh, you know just to be able to, to show like them that technology people will be like wow that, that's sorcery that's magic right right you would have to have some way to prove to them that it did work but yeah right. that was the first thing that occurred to me too yeah well you need to take back the cell phone tower and somebody to actually be at the other end for you to demonstrate but yeah i would love to do that there must be some technology we could take back where we didn't have to uh, jump through yeah. that many hoops <laughs> Unless they could find a way to make a smartphone that is so smart that at the you know at some atomic level somehow at the <laughs> quantum level it could connect to a signal on the other side of the portal you know I don't know something Thank crazy you. like that uh, you know it's funny because there's a video uh, from a Charlie Chaplin movie that surfaced a few years ago I don't know if you guys have seen this uh, where there's a lady walking in the video and she could be seen uh, with what looks like a cell phone in her ear and she's like yapping away Charlie I've Chaplin seen some uh, of these. obviously Charlie Chaplin there was no cell phones back then so. Um, Interesting stuff. I mean, that could be proof of uh, time travelers. It could be just coincidence. Very well, could be. It could be somebody adjusting their their the rim of the brim of their hat in some odd way, or they're tucking their hair behind their ear, and we just can't see it from the angle right. the photo is taken. You know, but yeah, that, that that's that's very interesting. You know. Now, being an editor of this book and collaborating with a lot of folks, I know you know off air we were talking about some of the folks that collaborated with you on here. Um, Georgia Tukalus, one of our favorites uh, from Ancient Aliens, uh, as I like to call him, the hairdo. Yeah, he gets a lot of a lot of commentary online about his hair. The hairdo. He was talking about his man. Didn't, was it you that said he like had a whole name industry? Man, I tell, you, I tell you what, nobody in ufology has had more funny memes online yeah, than George O'Toole. Nobody, nobody. I don't think anybody has. And yeah. the punchline in every meme is always, aliens. Aliens, it's aliens, yeah. yeah it's absolutely. aliens. Do, I, my, favorite, my favorite one is, and I'm sure everybody knows exactly the meme I'm talking about because you guys have seen it. If you've Googled George O'Toole, you've seen some of the memes. My favorite one is one that is, you know, the, you know, the typical pose, he's there with his two hands stretched out, uh, or, you know, his hands are out like he's about to say something. And it says on the top, the caption says, uh, dollar goes in, soda comes out. And the bottom says, must be aliens. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's a tight answer. Yeah, I, I was, I, I, my, I have to admit, my jaw hit the table when I first saw him explain his, his Atlantis theory on the ancient aliens television show. 
where he, he postulates that Atlantis was not a, a, a continent per se. It was actually a gigantic spaceship that <laughs> yeah. lifted up out of the water and uh, up into the clouds, I take it, even though it explicitly says in the myth or in the tale that it sank beneath the waves. <laughs> he wants it to go up into the air. Okay, more power to you, my friend. <laughs> I, you know, he, he completely lost me with the whole uh, Puma Punku section of uh, the, the whole Puma Punku uh, mm-hmm. video on ancient aliens. He, mm-hmm. They, they kind of lost me on that. I mean, I, I'm sure you're familiar with Puma Punku. Right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm fascinated with the place. I think it's, 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 it is very fascinating. And that's another thing where that ancient aliens debunked movie. Yeah. Very interesting take on it, and some of the stuff he had to say made sense, but the fact that Puma Punka is built at such an extremely high elevation, it is above the tree line. It is on the barren plateau as near as I, as, as far as well, I Well, it, it is There's, now, but we're talking about something that happened a long time ago. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. You're right there. And there's, keep that there's, postulation, there's postulation that the land there has risen, that that, right. lake, that that lake wasn't always the way it was, that it was connected to the sea at one point, that there's evidence of, of harbors in that place, uh, you know, that there was actual water, fit, you know, I hesitate to say seafaring, but if it was connected to the ocean at some point, which is which is the theory I'm discussing, then it's quite possible that there were ships coming in and out of that place, say ten thousand years ago, eight thousand years ago, you know, however many thousand. Because there's, you know, mainstream archaeology says, oh no, it's only two thousand years old, a thousand years old. Right. You know, the Incas built it, whereas there are other 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 researchers, you know, going back as far as Poznanski, I believe is how you pronounce his name, Arthur Poznanski. Who in you know the it's turn of the right. century, early 1900s, did a lot of measurements and came to the conclusion that it was the oldest city on the planet. Basically, that he put it as old as archaeologists are saying that um, Gobekli Tepe is in Turkey these days. You know, 12,000 years old to the right. end of the last ice age. Yeah, I believe Dan Hancock makes you know goes into some pretty you know, some deep detail about it in Fingerprints of the Gods. Um, but, you know, then there's the idea, well, those stones might not be in their original place from, from when they were first set. If the ground moved, how does he know that he's measuring the correct measurements? That's one question that always came to my mind. You know, if, if, if the ground rose or sank, it wouldn't Well, that and also the, the adjacent towns nearby, have, have they've looted that area. I mean, they've, they've gone in there and taken all kinds of They've things. gone in and gotten stone, absolutely. Yep. They've taken a lot of stone away, absolutely. Just like they did at the Great Pyramid. You know, mm-hmm. they took a lot of those casings away. You know, when the casing stones get damaged by an earthquake, it makes it a lot easier to just go and take stones. I mean, they've dismantled entire pyramids in, in Egypt, charted them away that we're just now finding out about this. And I don't know if you've seen that documentary about the, the Band of Peace. It's uh, like one of those four-hour documentaries about ancient Egypt. It's online. You can catch it on YouTube and stuff. And one of the episodes, I believe it's on that show, one of the episodes they discuss a pyramid that's like one over in that band of peace where nobody knows about it. There's no tourists that go there really, but it's an entire pyramid, like the Great Pyramid. Or It's not quite that big, but it's nearly that big, except that it's all gone. You know, it's only the, the underground parts that are left to it. There's nothing above ground hardly at all left to this pyramid. It Was it used for something else? Or yeah, yeah. They took they, yeah, the natives came and they took all the stone away and took it into Cairo, basically, and built up sections of Cairo or whatever city is right next to that. I believe it's Cairo. I, I believe it's still Cairo. I think you're right, there. Yeah. Preston, how disappointed are you when when you read or you do your own research on some of the stuff that you, you know, you've looked at in the past from ancient alien uh, lore, and you find out that there is a, a perfectly reasonable explanation that is not even alien-related or connected. I mean, how disappointed do you get? Say, I can't say I'm ever disappointed, really, because all knowledge to me is interesting. I'm, I'm always fascinated to find the answer, whether it's the one I'd prefer it to be or not. You know what I mean? I mean, just because it's not ancient aliens doesn't mean I'm going to, like, you know, go to bed all blue. But, you know, there are plenty of times I, I go, oh, darn, that's, you know, I really wanted that to be aliens. <laughs> right. but, you know, as I got older, you know, I know the pyramids weren't built by aliens, or at least I've decided that the pyramids weren't built by aliens, because I can't say I know anything. And that was, 
That's well, let me ask you, if they weren't built by aliens, mm-hmm. what are you saying is the date of when it was built? Oh, I definitely ascribe them. A lot of the architecture, I can't say all of the ancient ruins, you know, and even Giza Plateau, but I think that the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx are both examples, and the Sphinx Temple, you know, in front of the Sphinx that's down, you know, however many meters below the surface of the ground. I think that's a lot older than mainstream archaeology says. This. I think well, that didn't Robert Schock was right. And yeah, didn't they carbonate the right. Sphinx and it was like more than 20,000 years old or something like that? What's that? Didn't they carbon date the Sphinx, or was it well? Like they didn't. Kind of... They didn't carbon date it. You can't really carbon date a sphinx. Oh, water, but, wa- but water they, dated. They decided, it was. yeah, because the water erosion. Right, they, that's what it was. Yeah. Robert Schock said seven thousand years ago. It's it, he wouldn't go older than seven thousand years at the time because there wasn't anything else on Earth that he could point to and say, well, it's you know, there's a precedent there. There's something. Wait till Antarctica melts, he, he, then we'll he, see some stuff. He, right, right. But now they've got Gobekli Tepe, which is 7,000 years older than the oldest estimate of mainstream archaeology for the Great Pyramid. I mean, it, you know, it's 5,500 years older than than Stonehenge, you know, in Turkey. This megalithic architecture. And, I mean, it's on a massive scale. It's an entire hillside where they think it's twelve to 14,000 years Old. I mean, that's ancient. Ancient. Those people weren't growing crops yet, mm-hmm. according to the mainstream. They weren't domesticating cattle yet. The, you know, the, they were barely civilized. They were hunter gatherers, and yet there were, you know, hundreds if not thousands of people congregating in this place in Turkey. It, it, at the end of the last ice age, literally, the ice age was still raging, and uh, these people were were gathering and and constructing megalithic architecture on a major scale and transporting these stones miles and miles and erecting them and carving them intricately. I mean, it's fascinating. So there had to be, like, I, I say that civilization definitely extended at least into, into the last ice age. There's so much evidence of modern humans mm-hmm. to ancient, ancient dates. You look at some of the carvings that have been found, just like the little figurines that they can date to you know, 40,000 years old, some of these Venus carvings in, in, in Europe alone. Yep. I mean, that's ancient. And it might, it might be Neanderthal. It might not be human. It might not be, you know, Homo sapien, but it's still human, you know, as oh, far you, as I'm you, you want to freak out. Uh, scientists uh, recently found a pipe, okay, just a, it's a pipe for some kind of piping system. Oh, yeah, in right? China. In China, that is 150,000 years old. What? Oh, I totally missed this story. Oh, this is a crazy story. Uh, look, check this out. It's, it says here, 150,000-year-old pipe baffles scientists in China. Uh, it says, out of place in time. That's the article. Uh, this is a crazy, crazy story. And it looks like a water pipe or some kind of a pipe from a piping system. And, well, uh, they had a whole row of them they found in China. Yeah, as well. a bunch of them. And Now, if we're talking about pipes that are 150,000 oh. years old. What does that say about mankind on this planet now? Hey, look, it's been my, my theory for a long time, guys, that mankind has evolved on this planet for a lot longer than we've been given credit or even given knowledge of. And we've evolved several times. Maybe when an ice age comes, you know, we have to kind of like live a certain way until the ice age goes away. Because the planet goes through this climate change over and over and over. It's a cycle, you know, it just keeps happening. I don't think that we cause global warming. Uh, in Absolutely. Fact, in fact, I saw a video a couple of nights ago, which well, made, me, made me crack up. Check this out. It was about, um, uh, what's his face? Um, Al, Gore. Al Gore. Al Gore, yeah, Al Gore, exactly. It was a video with Al Gore uh, where he was saying seven years ago, that, oh, in 2014, the ice caps are going to melt and we're all going to be underwater. It's 2014. Well, I, I have, There's I more have ice no, than there was before. <laughs> I have no caps. qualms. I have no qualms personally taking partial credit for global warming. I have no problem saying, <laughs> yes, my contribution has definitely been average Methane, for the last huh? 40, 40 something years. I've definitely been working hard at, at warming the planet and I probably will for the day I die and so will the rest of humanity. But you're right in that there are cyclic occurrences of ice ages and warm spots, you know, and that we extend so much further back because there's, you know, like Barbara Ann Clow wrote in her, her classic book, Catastrophobia. We, ha- we are a species with a catastrophobia, a phobia of catastrophe. We don't like to discuss catastrophes. You know, the idea that we can get wiped out in an instant by either a mega 
mega, well, mega volcano, a tsunami, or a, a, an asteroid strike that hits us and decimates us. We have a, a, a calamity that's on such a large scale that the only people who are left are people who are, say, un, uncontacted tribes in the Amazon. These yeah, are the only people yeah. that manage to survive. I, this is this is a, this is obviously a, a pretty extreme postulation, yeah. but I think it's quite possible, considering the time frame that we're discussing. If there is a hundred and fifty thousand year old pipe system that they've found now in China, say, okay, or this pyramid in in uh, Gunung Padang, I think is how you pronounce it. That uh, you, you, you're discussed. asking the wrong person for pronunciation. Advice. Yeah, I think it's I think it's Gunung Padang, and yeah, it's, it's in good enough for me. Uh, I believe it's in Thailand. Uh, it's in Indonesia. Excuse me, that's Thailand, right? Is Indonesia Thailand? Yeah, close enough. Sounds right. It's, yeah. it's pretty close. Yeah, um, they have a pyramid there that they think goes back to about twenty two thousand BC, perhaps. If it if their dating uh, winds up being confirmed. And this is another one of these oldest structures now on the planet that they're thinking, you know, but, you know, and there's been a lot of postulation about that part of the world seeing hundreds of hundreds of square miles of land, if not thousands of square miles of land disappear at the end of the last ice age. Yep. So that so much of what they may have constructed is now under the ocean. It's under oh, the waves. Yeah. We're not going to see it. You look at Nan Madal in the South Pacific. Like I said, I'm waiting built. for Antarctica to get... Uh, right, the right. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, absolutely. Antarctica is a, a, a perfect example. You know, that's, it's quite feasible that that's a landmass that at one yep. time... I mean, haven't they discovered forests, you know, petrified forests in, in Antarctica? I could swear that they found, like, fields of, of petrified tree stumps in Antarctica. Well, I don't know about, I don't know about Antarctica, but check this out. It says here in a, a mysterious pyramid in China. That's where they found the, these pipes in a uh -huh. pyramid. So let's let's keep that into perspective here. It was near a pyramid. It was in a pyramid. Okay. Right. Right. So uh, that's... It, it says China's Quanqai Province. Uh, it says here uh, near Mount Bengong. That's what it says here. Uh, are these caves filled with these pipes leading to a nearby saltwater lake? So these are definitely, uh, from the looks of it, they're they're water pipes. Right. Wow. These, these folks had water pipes. I mean, they had running water. And they're iron pipes. The iron pipes, which would last wow. 150,000 to 100,000 years. They're not years. even clay. They're like iron. Smelted I, yeah. iron. Yeah. These people were creating pipes with iron, folks. Okay? That's they had incredible. technology beyond what we give them credit for. And this is, you know, and going back to my statement earlier that we've evolved several times, and I believe this wholeheartedly a lot of the lore like atlantis for example you know atlantis could have been somewhere like in africa could have been atlantis for all we know or somewhere mm -hmm. in the middle east for all we know after you know the evolution of the planet and things happen you know ice age come and goes you it know, actually tsunamis reminds me of your comment about about all the roswells around the world the yeah. chinese roswell and the and now we have you know the african atlantis and the and atlantis in america i actually published an article in my book that we're discussing sort of um, oh, okay. Atlantis in America, uh, and because I'm fascinated with the with the idea that he meant you know Central America and, and Northern South America, even even North America. I mean, you look at all of the ancient dwellings, Poverty Point, Louisiana, it's just like nearly you know between a quarter and a half mile in size, this huge amphitheater sized structure, uh, you know, or amphitheater shaped structure that's. You know, it's a it's a, a mound, but it's. I think we were discussing this the other day on the other program. Mm -hmm. um, these mounds seem like okay, it's really low low tech, but in actuality, it's not just piling on baskets of mud. It's piling on baskets of mud on top of clay, on top of pebbles, on top of grass, each layered so that it's specifically engineered to allow water to seep through it and not erode away the mound so it does last for a few thousand years so we're still watching them we're still walking over them and having to you know move them to put our highways through and our golf courses and whatever else we have to do to destroy them to put our 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 civilization down today these these structures maybe 
that's what he meant when he was talking about Atlantis, that it disappeared. Because Cuba and the, the, the Bahamas, and er, that's another region that lost a lot of land at the end of the last ice age. Correct, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that is what Atlantis was. I just have always been partial to that theory. I think it's really I the would idea. not Honestly, I would not doubt it. It's not because I'm Cuban, but I would not doubt that Atlantis was somewhere near Cuba. Well, you look, look, at, look at all of the stories that the conquistadors brought back, mm -hmm. the initial contacts where they yep. ran into seagoing canoes that were, yeah. you know, they, 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 they labeled them rafts, and they were really, like, looking down on them. But in actuality, these rafts yep. were a lot better made than the, the caravals that the conquistadors arrived in, seasick and scurvy-ridden. And these people had built these very intricate, very highly, you know, te technologically designed rafts that allowed the water to just flow through them and not swamp them and not sink them. And they used, they used these, instead of the keels, they used, I forget what they're called, they're large flat stones that they would slide in and out of the raft at different points to use as a keel instead of the actual firm keel that they built into a ship today or that the Spaniards were doing, which allowed the ship to roll a lot more and make them all seasick and stuff. Well, these, these boats that the, the Indians were, were cruising around miles from land, I mean, they weren't, they, they, you could, they couldn't see land, but the first Indians that the Conquistadors ran into, I think whoever, God, who, who invaded Peru? Matt Cortez. God, I can't believe I'm blanking on this. How embarrassing. <laughs> and you're the yeah. editor. I know, it's, it's really <laughs> embarrassing. We're going to have to come back to this, but uh, those Spanish, or when they first ran into Indians, it was offshore, out in, in, the, in the water, and they killed most of them and kept a few of them captive to, to use as interpreters when they actually made landfall. Pizarro? Is Pizarro who conquered Peru? I believe God, so, yeah. It's really embarrassing. <laughs> I should know this. It's one of my favorite topics. I'm really interested. Well, here, here's a question, though. I mean, you know, let's, let's go back to... It's that lack of sleep syndrome. Excuse me. Go ahead. Yeah, you're, you're having the same problem that Alan's having, yeah. with lack of sleep yeah. syndrome. But no, let, let's go back to um, to what we were talking about here a couple minutes ago uh, about the, um, you know, the, man, the, the, the amount of evidence that might be mounting that Atlantis was somewhere, uh, you know, very real and somewhere near mm. a place like Cuba or a place maybe like Africa or something like that. Right. I mean, I'm pretty sure you've heard of all the stuff they found under the ocean by Cuba. Oh, yeah, I have, actually. That's that's something that's very interesting. You know, there's, 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 hold on, hold on. There's, there's, no, there's no real proof of it. There's just been assertions that we've found stuff. Well, you don't know, forget, like, you also have to understand there's been a lot of USOs more around Cuba right. and those mm, waters right. than any other part of the world. Right. You're, that's a good point, actually. There, there have been a lot of stories about under underwater, unidentified underwater objects, right? Well, I yeah. have you seen videos. I have seen videos of uh, of uh, people, uh, you know, uh, doing uh, research around the Cuban. Uh, you, know, you know, you can't go too close to Cuba because of the, the right. space. You know, they'll they'll right. shoot you literally. Right. Uh, right. But if you get permission, actually, go diving on there. I've seen diving videos where you could see structures and all kinds of things in the videos, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. which is incredible. Oh, really? Oh, I would like to see those. I'm always fascinated at, at anything like that. Yeah, he can send you links. He always can send yeah. links. Yeah, send me some links, please. I'd love to see that, for sure. Well, uh, who was it? Um, Andrew Collins? He wrote one of his books. Um, it, it might have been Ashes of Angels. I don't think it was Ashes of Angels. I think it was the one he wrote after that. He, he discusses uh, offshore Cuba and diving in the caves off Cuba. Um, in his search for Atlantis, and, and talks about you know finding some really interesting interesting ruins and evidence of ancient structures there. You know, but I haven't seen too much evidence of it. But like I said, I would love to see these links. Yeah, yeah I'll you know, see kind of reminds me of the UFO in the Black Sea. You know, uh, I've seen uh, a lot uh, of sonar image of it, but I've not seen a film of it yet. Well, yeah, you know, that's that's another uh, mystery there because, I mean, they made a big hoopla on that. I mean, that was everywhere from Huffington Post, right. Actually, CNN. I've seen some rock piles. That. They've shown that's us some rock piles. I, yeah. Well, the, the, the initial sonar looked like, what, the Millennium Falcon was there? Yeah, yeah, it looked really neat. <laughs> yeah, yeah it so really that, cool. I was just like, wow. Let me ask you, anybody see that uh, shelf just off of um, off of D.C.? Uh, not D.C., off of uh, Los Angeles? No. Off of L.A.? The what? 
Oh, the, the one that looks like a big, uh, like underground carport with the big columns. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I saw something recently that was debunking that. I, I wish I could remember what I was reading. I just saw it last week. Somebody was. I wonder if it was Alejandro. Uh, congratulations <laughs> on getting him on your show. By the way, that's a that's a coup. I, it's I, an awesome coup. I like yeah, his awesome. stuff. Yeah, definitely. I could swear it was on Open Minds. So I was reading something that was debunking that underwater shelf. I know exactly what you're talking about. It looks really cool in the underwater photography, the, uh, the sonar imagery. It's another one of these cases of uh, sonar imagery making it look really um, dramatic. You know? But apparently it, it's not quite... But I mean, it, this is just one person naysaying it. For all I know, he could be wrong, too. It could right. very well be an underground base. I don't know. You know, that's Who the knows? whole theme there... of my book. I don't have any any say one way or the other if any of the articles I published in that book are true. <laughs> you know, I don't that's know the, if that they're true. really explored. That's the What's ironic that? thing, isn't it? What'd you say, Alan? What percentage of this world is really truly explored? Right, right. How many times do we hear that they found the oldest structure, the oldest ruins, <laughs> the oldest Bible, the oldest... Almost on a monthly basis. I don't know, what day of the week is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You know, right on. So, I mean, look yeah, at these pipes, 150,000-year-old right. pipes, and this is right. just uh, just right. out recently. I mean, it, it, like when you find stuff like that, that tells you that you know we're, we're a little blind to our right. real history on this planet, folks. Not everything you know it to be fact is fact. Uh, that's right. why, you know, I, I don't get so bent out of shape uh, when, you know, I hear stuff like, oh, there's never going to be disclosure. They're never going to tell us. Well, we don't know about our history. You really think we're going to find out about aliens or anything else that they might right. be keeping secret? First, let's learn about our real history. Because I have a feeling, and, and follow along here, guys, I have a sneaking suspicion that the big secret is that we are the aliens all along. Mm. Mm. Many, I, 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 I lean that direction myself. Many, it, many, it, many thousands of years ago, mankind was on this planet. We had technology. You know, the Ice Age was a coming. People were like, we got to get the heck out of Dodge because it's going to get bad. And, you know, a lot of us uh, had some kind of technology, and they left the planet. Came back. Mm. Wait a second. Ice Age is gone. This settled. And, you know, that's, I, mean, I, I, I love that. The, the Battlestar Galactica idea that you know is, yeah. out there somewhere the old series or the new the old series. series you know they're they're looking for the root of the the base planet of humanity i don't yeah. know if they did that in the new series i don't know if they did that in the remake series but in the original series that was the whole premise of the show yeah that they were seeking the home planet of humanity the fabled home world earth you know I, I just think that's a really fascinating idea. Well, I thought Earth was the whole base. You know, I thought Earth was one of the lost tribes. That was the whole thing to me. Well, that could be that. That could be the actual. I thought it was the home world, but you maybe you might be right. Actually, maybe it's it's the the lost tribe. That that makes sense too. But yeah, it's the same idea though. You know, there's this it, it's spreading out of humanity across the galaxy. You know, or even further. Wow, wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know, because that's what I, I like. I, you know, when I think about UFOs and, you know, I find myself late at night listening to one radio program or another because I, I'm constantly fishing for new new information. Uh, I, I, I come up with my own personal theories and ideas of what UFOs could be and what these ancient sightings and ancient reports could be and what modern reports. I really, I really sometimes find myself leaning towards the whole time travel thing. What if it is people from our future? coming back to check up on us or just sightseeing. Who knows? It's you possible. Know, like, you know, and here's here's the thing. I'm not one that follows or believes in time travel per se. I'm, I'm a little skeptical on time traveling to the past. Yeah, yeah. I, obviously, I think time traveling to the future is very possible. I think even Einstein's mm -hmm. theory of relativity kind of gives you a, a blueprint on how to do it. You know, it's, it's, it tells you pretty much how it can be done. Uh, now, here's the thing, though. Time traveling to the past, still not sold on that idea. But mm. if anything is more possible, uh, what would be more possible? Time travelers from our future that discovered a way to go back in time and travel into this time, or maybe learn to travel interdimensionally or something like that, mm. or a galaxy uh, maybe 20, 30 light years away, two light years away, a yeah, light year away, actually has a race on it that discovered technology and discovered propulsion and discovered warp drives, discovered wormholes, and they ended up coming to this little corner of the galaxy. Yeah, this, this, this tiny little, little speck. planet, right? Right. right. Exactly. Why this planet? 
out of right. all the planets. You know, that's, that baffles exactly, me. That's the, exactly. that's the great question in ufology. Why this planet in particular? Right. Very good point. I'm Very telling you, point. the Goldilocks zone, or it's the minimal resources that we yeah. have, something. Yeah. Well, yeah. Here's I think I'd, I'd like that Goldilocks zone actually idea because that's what we're doing, right? Isn't that how yeah, we're but he, for, here's for, here's for that's like what planets. we're looking for. Doesn't mean yeah. we're going to be able to get there. No, 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 but, here, no, you, no but, but we're but finding that is what we're using as a criterion for right. white planets. But we're right? we're that's finding. Where we're searching. We we found already hundreds and hundreds mm. of planets in the Goldilocks zone, right. within our own you know Milky Way, within our observable yeah. part of the galaxy. So yeah. I mean, th- just the fact that we're finding hundreds of them out there, that means it's pretty common. So right. again, why this little planet? Why so right. many? Two hundred and fifty-eight reported UFO cases last month. Yeah, I heard you say yeah. that. That's really interesting. That's, a, that's that's crazy. Seems like a pretty good number to me. It that does. Seems like it a would... pretty high number. And we're now like in alert level record. five, by the way. We're we're doing pretty good. It's not too not too bad. We're on alert level five. Oh yeah, I, I, that's interesting that they have an actual threat level. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that is funny? Actually, huh? Is it a threat? Is it a threat level, or is it just like an alert level? <laughs> I think alert level thing? one. Uh, alert level one comes with like the caption, "Oh snap, it's hit the fan." <laughs> and of course, we're talking about the uh, the ancient pipes found in China, hundred and fifty thousand year old pipes in China. That is bananas, man. Bananas uh, times three. 150,000-year-old pipes. But now here's another story that really uh, boggles the mind, uh, Preston, and it's something that um, Alan over here brought up uh, during break. Alan, you want to ask him about uh, that one object that boggles the mind? Yeah, I'm wondering if you have any thoughts, comments, or views on the Black Knight and how long that's been around and what that's possibly Uh, I I, I, I'm fascinated with the Black Knight. I I first... First time I heard of it, I my ears perked right up. I I was just watching some documentary. I think it was Unexplained NASA Files. Is that the name of the show? And they they had a segment on the Black Knight, and they tried to blow it off. The really cool series of pictures. It looks like um, a, a, a jet plane, a super, you know. Um, uh, people are saying uh, it's space junk, and I don't. You buy have that space much. junk. It's a blanket. <laughs> I'm not buying that. It's, it's, the story's been around plenty of time. You a know, long much time. longer than actual space flight. We've been hearing about this satellite over the over the poles and in a weird orbit around the planet. And I think it's entirely feasible that there's something up there hovering around, watching us. I mean, I'm not going to say 100 percent it's there, but I think the evidence seems to be pretty pretty lean in that direction for sure my, my thing is yeah. why haven't we shot this thing down or why haven't like we gone and observed it up close uh you know i, I heard wonder that, I wonder that about so it. many ufo sightings why why don't the, the powers that be send up uh, aircraft to investigate these sightings more often well so right, told me there was a case. shuttle mission i've heard that there's a sh- i've heard that there was a shuttle mission to it Really? Okay. I haven't heard that yet. No, 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 no. Uh, that does not even ring a bell. That story. Yeah, uh, I'm not doing this. Hang on, I'll see what I can do to find that. I would, lo- I would like to know more, because that is something that occurs to me all the time. How often do they investigate these things? Because just because I haven't heard that they have investigated or not doesn't mean they haven't. I, I don't know most of the things that my military is involved in. The covert right. budgets are so astronomical. I mean. Where do we think those missing trillions from the Pentagon are going? They're not going into everybody's pocket entirely. You know, a lot of that's going to fund covert operations and black. What, what, black what was that uh, great line in the movie Independence Day uh, that the father, uh, Jeff Goldblum's father, had? It was like, "What you don't really think they spend uh, X amount on uh, toilet bowls, do you?" Right, right, $1, absolutely, absolutely. Was. <laughs> seven, eight hundred dollars on a nut and bolt. You know? Yeah, Go exactly. Ahead, by the way, I'm doing the uh, research here. I'm showing Space Shuttle uh, Mission STS-88 might have been the one that actually uh, got up close to the Black Knight. Nice. Uh, huh. When he says he's doing his research, that means he's on Google. What did yeah, they Google's... Decide? I'm sorry? What did they decide? They, well, it's NASA. They're not going to tell you anything. Yeah, never a straight they, answer. They, did, they, didn't, they didn't disclose, huh? Nope. <laughs> Never a straight answer. That's what NASA stands for. Well, I'm leaning towards towards it being a real phenomenon that there really is something up there that uh, that it's quite possible that there have been, or at least has been, a mission where they have specifically 
said to somebody, okay, it's it's time for you to go and film the Black Knight thing right. that's out there. And they, they closed in on it using radar because don't they track asteroids and other space junk floating around? That might <laughs> you would hope so. Well, yeah, why wouldn't they be able to track this mysterious satellite? I mean, it can't just, unless it really is appearing and disappearing from radar. I mean, maybe it's not mysterious. Maybe we can't track it. Maybe it is a... An alien well, spaceship. I mean, but here, such here's a, the thing. But they got pictures of it, though. There's pictures of it, and, and from my understanding, right. even like amateurs uh, have mm-hmm. been able to capture this thing. Oh in yeah, space. yeah. Right. So, right. so it's not only NASA has been able to photograph this this thing. Amateurs uh, have been able to do it as well. So if that's the if they, that's the you know that's there, that you are able to capture it on video and film. Why can't you go, get close to it with some kind of a shuttle or some kind of a of a vehicle and, and, and inspect it? You know, right. jump on top of this thing and, and inspect it. I mean, look, it's not that far off uh, where they can't have, like, a spacewalk and get on this thing and look at it uh, unless it has some kind of a magnetic field that destroys the ship so they get close to it or something like that, which at that point, that would be crazy. That would be the yeah. scariest thing possible if you think about it because you will be able to find out what it is, and it's just sitting there. Yeah. Kind of creepy. Now, the first reports of the Black Knight, I could be wrong, but it was, what, like 1960 was the Preston? No, no, it was Nick no, and Tesla. Tesla. They were they Tesla, were talking yeah. about getting little green man signals. I think that's what they were calling them. Is that what it is? I, I believe so. Uh, you know, he was talking about picking up weird radio signals from space, and he he was the the first one to to say that there was possibly this satellite, you know, going around the planet. You know, there must be somebody up there, uh, and he was picking up transmissions, but there was no evidence beyond his assertions as far as I know. Right. Uh, well, there, there was know. that then in the 1920s, uh, ham radio astronomer, ha- ham radio uh, people started getting uh, some weird feedback and things like that. So they were right. uh, hearing it also during World War II uh, that, and World War I. Uh, they've also had incidents of transmission issues, and I guess it yeah, just it's uh, not all It's not all background up. radiation. They're not all picking up background radiation from yeah. the Big Bang, you know. It's there's other things going on up there for sure. Well, but I, I mean, I haven't really done uh, uh, any writing about the Black Knight, so I couldn't say much more than you guys could say about it. Other than it, it's a fascinating topic to me. It is. <laughs> it's a it's a very yeah. fascinating topic. Uh, could you imagine if we went, one day we do step on top of this thing and we we figure out that we put this up there, you know, about one hundred and fifty thousand years ago? Well, I like that. Well, yeah, that would be pretty cool. I want to know who put the 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 um, monument on Phobos. Ah, the Phobos. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, the, you see that. I think that's that a thing. fascinating, oh, fascinating yep. photograph. And that Buzz, Al- Buzz Aldrin, I believe, even mentioned it on C-SPAN. Now, granted, he didn't say aliens put it there, but he did specifically mention. That should be something that we should talk to the to say to the public. Look at what yep. we found. We found no, a monolith that, was that on also the time that Was that also the time that he talked about we'd like to go back to Mars again? That was when he was talking about <laughs> Mars. Yeah, he yeah. wanted Mars, and the way to get the public interested was to talk about this monolith on Phobos. And once people find out about this monolith, they're going to be very excited, and they want to they're going to want a back mission to Mars. Yeah, that was his idea. Tell them about this thing, and for sure, if you look it up on Google, it's a fascinating. I mean, where did it come from? It's it. It's a tower of some kind. That's yeah. It's it's, huge. Like, it's, it's, yeah. it's 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 standing upright. Yeah, you know, it's and it's there's nothing around it. You Nature know, doesn't it, do that, it, folks. It, yeah, yeah. So they don't stand stones up in, yeah. in a dry, airless environment. I mean, it seems pretty mysterious to me. You know. I mean, it could be completely 100% asteroid. It could be an asteroid that landed very gently. <laughs> but yeah, I just don't think a so, you know? Yeah, asteroid that creates that kind of a shadow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. I'm doesn't sorry. Doesn't seem very, doesn't yeah. seem very feasible to me, you know? And, of course, the alternative is pretty out there, you know? The, the idea that maybe, you know, some civilization actually did put... Uh, granted, why would they? But then there's the whole idea that Phobos itself is artificial, wouldn't that be cool to land on Phobos one day and find yeah. out that indeed it is hollow and that indeed it was a... Uh, uh, a space station of some kind. A space station. <laughs> that would be absolutely phenomenal. I would be so excited. 
Well, you know, a lot of people think also, Preston, that uh, the moon, our moon, is a space station, and that right. you know, that right. it's hollow as well. Uh, right. Which, look, if you're going to observe a planet's evolution over the course of, I don't know, billions of years, you might want to put a space station somewhere, like, really close to the planet, like, say, on right. the moon, right. perhaps. Uh, it's a possi- It's a possibility that maybe the moon is a space station of some sort. I wouldn't um, be surprised if, it, wouldn't be if there's actually something on the moon. I don't know yeah. if I go so far as to put put much credence into the entire moon being a space station. No, I think there might like be several stations. Waste of effort, <laughs> yeah, you know, but actually, somebody being on the moon. There's enough weird pictures of things on the moon to to make me think, wow. Oh, you know. no kidding! Are you familiar with the Mona Lisa uh, UFO? I'm not Mo- sure the, the Mona Lisa alien that supposedly uh, they found on the moon of the Apollo one of the Apollo missions. I don't believe so. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, uh, you got so much more research to do, my friend. Uh, yeah. This is from, a, I think it was Apollo 20. Um, it's a, one of the secret missions that is, like, off the books. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a, f- a video that surfaced a few years ago, and it shows even an astronaut in the video playing with the camera, uh, mm-hmm. panning around in, in, in the uh, actual um, control room on the shuttle, and uh, it pans over to what looks like a body of some f- sort of a humanoid being, female being. And um, the story goes, they found this being on the moon, and guess oh, what? Oh, I know what you're talking about. She looks Native, Native American. American. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know how much credence I put into that. I just don't know. I, I'm i such, you know, like I said, I, I will not, I refuse to say I believe this story or I disbelieve this story, but I'm so hard to convince at the same time of the validity of so many stories. I hear so many people... There's one person that I'm just having the worst time actually giving any credence to, and I I wasn't going to do this. Clifford Stone He's just the one guy I'm having so much trouble putting any credence to. I listen to him tell me that there's 57. I, I heard it. That's why I'm thinking about Clifford, because I heard it in your radio promo. At the beginning oh, the, of the 57 show. alien species. Yeah, the 57 <laughs> alien species, and I just... He, I just can't get into his story. But then I listen to other people tell their stories, and I, I'm right away totally believing them. They just seem to me to be legit. I'm a very hard person to convince, while at the same time not wanting to put 100%, okay, this is definitely the fact. Because I know that so many people do make stuff up. Wow, that was close. Make stuff up, right? Quick save. I almost. I, I was the one who goofed <laughs> up earlier. Yeah, yeah. He he dropped the f bomb earlier. No, but you know, speaking of making stuff up, and uh, the, you know, that's another black eye in ufology. Uh, right. The amount of hoaxers. Uh, you know, let's mm-hmm. get let's get over uh, the obvious ones. Uh, Van Daniken, um, mm-hmm. Zachariah Sitchin. You know, the mm-hmm. obvious guys who've built a, a career over at Billy Myers. Uh, but, you know, besides these charlatans, there's a whole lot of other people that create videos for YouTube just for the hell oh, of it. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Just because it's fun, and they can do mm-hmm. it now. It's so easy. This is and what really kills me. And they get invited on these, these, these lecture circuits. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this I'm is, dumbfounded. This is what kills me. It kills me, Preston, that so many people go out of their way to do this just to, like, hop into the the field of ufology so they can feel like, oh, we're a part of ufology. We're, right. we're, we're a part of it. You know, we're doing the lectures now. You know, we're doing the tours. We're on radio. and right. We're on podcasts and it, and on the Internet. And it detracts from real research that's going right. on. And it's, I really wonder how much of it is PSYOPs, operations, stuff that's designed to make us distracted from the legitimate research that goes on. And Richard Dolan, you guys mentioned him earlier. I, yep. I too, am a fan of, of Richard's. I, I think that his, his work should be... Much more mainstream. It's fascinating, I agree. Yeah. and and because there's so many loop jobs out there and obvious hoaxers and just simply deluded people too. But yes, I'm 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 mainly the, I'm mainly addressing the willful hoaxers. How many of these people are actually paid sock puppets so that the mainstream can point to the giggle factor and brush aside the legitimate research that goes on so that the military that does know what's going on can can rest, rest a little more easy. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. it makes it harder for people to pay attention to the legitimate stuff. 
You know, and I'll go a step further. I'll, I'll even say that uh, they don't even have to pay people anymore to do some of this stuff. People, mm-hmm. are, people enjoy You're it right. just for the notoriety. Right. I mean, look, let's take a look at a very famous uh, person in ufology who is in a lot of hot water right now, uh, Stan know. Romanek. Yes, I was just okay. thinking him, actually. Yes, absolutely. This is, this is a, a guy <laughs> who came forward saying, oh, I have this fascinating video of an alien in the window. It's an amazing video. When you guys see this, it's going to blow the cover off of the entire video. thing. And it is one of the hokiest videos I've ever seen. It's yeah, clearly yeah. A, a, a fake. Terrible acting in Stan's okay. part. I've interviewed Stan. He's a nice enough fellow when you talk to him in person, but how many hoaxers are not nice people? Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Because making him not a nice person, right? Yeah, how many liars are not nice people when you're, you're right. trying to get a lie across? They're going to be nice to people, right? Right. Uh, look, right. Alejandro knows uh, Stan. He's you know he did a documentary, the uh, the extraordinary, the Stan Romanek story, uh, mm-hmm. which came out uh, recently, and he's in that video talking about Stan's case. And I laugh, you know, I saw it recently, and I laughed really hard when they get to that one part in the documentary, and everybody's like, "Well, Stan seems like such a normal person." <laughs> a, his family and him, they seem so normal, so nice. So, if they're yeah. just normal Surprise, folks, you know. why are aliens bugging him so much? Yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, he's That's just asking point. for it. Didn't you know? He's just asking for it. That's I a mean, good point. The whole thing, look, the whole Stan Romanek case is mind boggling that it got as big as it did. Uh, but now look what happened to the guy. Now he's charged with pedophilia. He's going oh, through his trial. Terrible. Yeah. I mean, the worst. Crime imaginable is yeah. what he's charged with. All right, let's Terrible. face the facts here. This is the worst thing you could do: is, is to harm a child, to molest a child, to be involved with any kind of pedophilia. There's nothing more disgusting than that. If yeah, this is true, proven true, and I and I pray for you, not even for Stan's sake, but for ufology itself, I pray that it's proven to be fake and that he's innocent, and that all charges are dropped, and he proves that it was all alien conspiracies, and mm-hmm, and he proves yeah. that he was 100 percent honest about everything. Because I would hate to think that a person that we put so much stock in into in, in the field of ufology and we've given mm-hmm. so much airtime and we've uh, let him get on our shows you know do the tv stuff to get the documentaries out to think that this person the whole time was you know looking at kitty porn or molesting children or whatever he was doing on the side while he was promoting all that stuff and interacting with everybody in the field of ufology that's sort of disturbing right. to me i mean that's very yes. disturbing because you Absolutely. look at this one guy and then you you know who's not to say that there's not an x amount of numbers of people just like him in the in the field of ufology Right. Which makes you again look at everybody in the field a little bit cross-eyed because now you're like you don't you right. don't know who who is real and who's fake and who's a, a pedophile and who's a sicko. Absolutely. And look in the entertainment business, there is a whole thing with pedophilia that's been coming forward in the last ten years. Uh, it's not anything uh, new. Uh, the pedophile right. rings are out there. Uh, you know, could ufology have one also a, pe- a little pedophile cult? Uh, the, uh, of these people who are all hoaxers and they all like you know do it just so they can get in contact with each other and share. Because I think there's a lot of hoaxing going on. It, it, oh no, there's definitely a lot of hoaxing going on. I don't but have how, any doubt about it. But how much of it is related to what Stan is caught up in? That's my question. That's scary. That's a scary thought. That is. It is. Well, we'll never have all the details. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Probably I, not. I would hope so. I would hope that one day we do have all the gory details and we find out who all these uh, culprits are, you know, behind the scenes. Because look, if he's he was caught supposedly like sharing documents and and stuff like that, and uh, you know, if this is the case, that means there are other people that he's sharing documents with, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Who are these other people? Right. My question mm-hmm. is bigger than you know him getting arrested. Is why haven't other people been arrested? True. Well, maybe he's maybe he's not connected to other people. Maybe it is just a little thing within his family. Because I, I think the only other person that knows that we know that knows is his wife, or that has been alleged to know anything is his wife, right? Right. Yeah, Lisa. Which, by the way, she's done a great job of, of PR, just continuing the ball rolling on the uh, the whole Stan Romanek case, and uh, it's like nothing ever happened. You know, if you look at her Facebook or whatever, it's like nothing happened. Everything's still right. cool. You know, right. we're still promoting uh, the documentary, the books. By the way, donate some money because we, we, we're broke. I mean, that's pretty much what you, what you see now on, on her page. Right. Uh, but look, if, if I was involved with uh, a family member who was accused of uh, pedophilia, believe me, the last thing you're going to see me do is post stuff on Facebook about, you know, like funny icons or, or funny news uh, from the news or, or anything that, that's controversial in nature. I might shut everything down and, and focus on my family member and see what went wrong there, you know, and worry about that, not worry about ufology. 
because it, it, it makes you a very depressing situation in the whole UFO field. How do we get attention back on UFOs and not on the pedof- 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 pedophile? <laughs> Yeah, and unfortunately, uh, you know, his is, he's not the only person who's ever been accused of, of this stuff. Uh, you know, that was even a gag in the X-Files movie. Remember that where, uh, um, I think it was uh, Martin uh, Landau, what was his name? Uh, one of the characters in the movie, he was accused of uh, pedophilia. And he's like, oh, what is it, the kitty porn again? I mean, it's kind of like the running joke also in ufology, so you got to keep mm-hmm. that in mind as well. This is mm-hmm. where I'm kind of 50-50, and I'm hoping that it's fake. You know, I'm hoping that he's innocent. Yeah. Well, hoping on amongst hope. We have to wait and see. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna judge anybody at this point. No, we we got to give him his uh, his uh, due process and uh, let him go right. through his trial and and prove that he's innocent if he is innocent. You know right. what I mean? And uh, that, that's good. Like if he is found guilty and all the evidence comes out and it's really really gory. Mm-hmm. That cannot be good for the entire state of ufology. I think yeah. we have to evaluate uh, who we put out there a little bit better. In the future, just have you know? a little bit of detachment, you know? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit too much. I don't know. The, the Stan Romanek case really, like, it, it depresses me. It really does. It depresses the hell out of me. Yeah, but he- yeah. Here's, the, here's, as you said earlier, you know, if there's no one else that they're going after in the community to arrest, it sounds a little like a plant. Hmm. Interesting. They're Could not, seriously, deal. they're... You know, obviously he's not cooperating with the law enforcement because he's got no information. He well, can't roll over on someone else. We don't know any right. of these cooperated or not yet. I mean, there's been no news comes out has come out since the arrest. Uh, it's been very quiet. So yeah. who knows if he's snitching on people and and talking? You know, I mean, we, look, we have no idea until this thing becomes a trial, if it ever goes to trial. I mean, this could end up like the R. Kelly debacle. Mm, yeah right. Mm. You know yeah, what happened you throw there. enough money. Yeah, you know what happened. You throw enough money on it, it goes away. Exactly. Right. Now, I don't know if Stan has that kind of money. Maybe. Yeah, I was just gonna say. I don't good. think Stan has that kind of money. <laughs> you throw much money at the at this. I don't think he's gonna be able to throw money until it goes away. Unfortunately for him. But uh, now, how do you feel? About, yeah. I mean, do you feel? Because I mean, I don't know if you've seen all the evidence, but I mean, do you feel that maybe Stan at, at first was really. Uh, experiencing uh, some kind of alien uh, connection, uh, abduction, or scenario, and then he kind of fabricated a lot of stuff later on. Or you think it was all fake from the beginning, or what are your thoughts on that, Preston? Personally, I, I like I said, I don't really want to judge anybody, but I've always been kind of leery. There's there's some people that strike me as really shady. Stan Romanek is one of them. That video, as soon as I saw that video of the bobbing head in the window. I've never been able to put any any stock into anything Stan Romanek says whatsoever. And there's other people like that around in the field that I just can't put any stock into whatsoever. And then there's others who I watch tell their story who I don't have any problem believing for one second. Those, those old women with their little kid in Texas years ago when I was a kid that had the UFO fly over, escorted by all the helicopters, and they came down with all the radiation sickness. I, I'm, I'm 99% sure that was some kind of military operation. It was probably a military craft that flew over their car. Right. But it was, it was something very real. I, I believe those people, when they tell their story, I see the evidence on their hands, their swelling and their, their sores and the sickness. And I've, you know, I've seen doctor's reports. You know, they, they got very sick. I've seen the kid now grown up. He's in his 40s now, I think. He's my age. And he's very sincere. He just wants answers. He wants the military to come come out and tell him what happened. I believe him right. every step of the way. And then there's, there's people that are on the... There are some that I don't know what to think. Who's the guy from Area 50? Bob Lazar. Bob that, Lazar. Guy, yep. that guy seems so believable. <laughs> I not. hate this. I, I, I might be ta- being taken for a ride, but I so badly want to believe him. <laughs> because he just tells a really good story. He really you know, does. He the, might the, he might the, be a complete flim flam artist, but darn it, he he <laughs> just he spins a great yarn. If, if, yeah, he, he if he's making that up, he he he's right there with Daniel Webster. I mean, he's a storyteller extraordinaire. You know. You know, uh, uh, Stan Friedman does not believe uh, Bob Lazar's story. Uh, one really, he doesn't. Now, I like not. Stan Friedman. I do like Friedman. I think he's a researcher that. Yep. 
does pretty good work. I don't think he's taken taken for a ride very often. Uh, and I by think the way, our, sometimes. But, by the way, uh, shout out to Stan Freeman, who's been a little bit under the weather. He uh, yeah, he he's been having heart trouble, right? Yeah, he uh, he had a, a heart attack, I believe, recently, and uh, yeah, he's doing a little bit better. So our our prayers okay. are with him. Hopefully, he gets a uh, full recovery. Yeah. So. Um, you know he's a, a great researcher, and he like he, like he, the Mirage Man movie that came out uh, mm-hmm. pinpointed some stuff that you know even he was duped in. Uh, you know a lot of a lot of it is conspiracy junk. A lot of it is the whole mixing. magic Majestic Twelve. I hate seeing that Majestic Twelve get such attention as a real organization when it was all fake. It might be. Yeah. It might there might be an organization like that out there, but that whole thing, that whole sheaf of papers and yep. film and. That's all the hoax. Yep. That's all like made up stuff. But it's it, I, I see it regurgitated on these uh, UFO sci-fi shows now. Uh, you know, oh, God, what was the last one I was just watching? Uh, I, I don't know what name. day of the week were you watching it. There's <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's, there's so many now. But it was just they're, they they share the room full of suits around a table and they're talking about Majestic Twelve and the various big names that were on the. The, the panel or the in the organization, and I'm like, no, this is not real. This is this is fabricated. This is fiction. Yep. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a, an organization up there. You look at the documents that Richard Dolan has has prized out of the military. There's obviously people on some of these military bases that were being reported to the UFO officer on the military base. If they got, you know, if you have a UFO report, you go to the UFO officer. Well, who is that guy reporting to? By the way, and that was on an, that was an episode of uh, UFO hunters. Which was the, the, they dug up the discussing? highway. Right, right. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, uh, I think, you know, they don't get the credit they deserve, but that show really was, uh, I think the the cusp or the, the veil. Yeah, that show. Really, yeah, that was broke, a good show. That was the I, show I, that I, really I, broke through and made the you know made it possible for History Channel and those kind of channels to really expand on this agreed. subject and and, and put these kind of shows on the air. And they uh, did a really good job on that show. Yeah, they did. I, they, 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 phenomenal I, I job. think they kept it from being overly you know, sensationalistic it, very well. Yep. Great well, job. You, you, you know, you're dealing with real researchers also, you know, Bill mm. Burns is a hell of a real researcher. Uh, right. I know that for a fact I, I produce a guy's show on Monday nights. Right on. Right so, on. yeah, so uh, working with him alone will tell you, you know, that this, he knows what he's talking about. Just by listen. It's funny because we get into conversations sometimes, Preston, and I just, uh, I tune out. Like, I completely like, just, like, mute myself and I just sit there and listen. I don't even want to say anything. I just want to hear <laughs> the information because right. it's, it's so much information that this man has. Um, That's great. And, legit researcher and again that's the show that really made it possible for a lot of uh, the shows like ancient aliens and and all these other shows that are, are out now absolutely um that are, are so popular now even uh crazy hair georgia tukulus has his own show now i i saw that i saw that he has a new show where he's going around the world looking at mysteries not just ufo related i don't think i think no, 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 no! It's all it's all aliens. It's all UFOs. Is it all aliens? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. a, yeah, I come on, known. it's George. It's aliens, man. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, I wasn't thinking. Sorry, lack of sleep and <laughs> It happens. It happens. If, <laughs> if, it's, if it's George or Tukulus involved, that there's going to be aliens yeah, and crazy aliens. aliens. You yeah, know, I'd love to interview him just to ask him, you know, a couple questions on his uh, knowledge on ufology, because he he knows Eric Van Daniken stuff really well. Like, right. if you listen to him talk, and, and he can recite Eric Van Daniken's work, like like it's you know verbatim. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I've also heard him on other shows, like Joe Rogan had him on his show not long ago, and he started asking him some random questions about Roswell, and he was like, I have no idea, and. I mean, really? it was like yeah, there was stuff like there was like really easy stuff, like interesting. It, which really baffled, you know, baffled me because I was like, you know, this guy who's gotten so much attention can't answer like simple questions about Roswell. Like, That's stuff really that interesting. Your average person would know, like, if you're right. semi interested in the UFO phenomenon, what's the first case that normally everybody talks about? Right, right, Roswell, Roswell. Right? right, right. Before Roswell, eh, Kenneth Arnold, Yahtzee. Yeah. Yahtzee. Betty and Barney Hill, Betty and Barney Hill, but really Roswell is the cream of the crop. That's the case. Yeah, uh, that is Rendlesham, I think. Which, by the way, there's a conference uh, coming up in Rendlesham. Yeah, I heard they, you guys. I heard you guys mention that. They're gonna you shed some it. new light. On I was Rendlesham gonna Forest. say, I, did I hear you saying something about new light? Yeah. Yeah, it's well, off in the distance. What are they? What are they? What are they possibly talking about now? Thirty years later, you got me. I don't I'm know. Really that was the question. Yeah. <laughs> 
I, yeah, I would like to know. Because it's possible, like, well, I think Alan said maybe they prized out some new documents or something, because didn't the British release all those documents a couple of years ago? Yeah, but you know, what possible they... documents could they possibly release? Oh, a guy <laughs> came forward saying he saw a light at the corner <laughs> of his window. Well, like, you, okay. you didn't know about the radiation until tonight, did you? So, I hadn't heard about the radiation, but I didn't know it was that spread. I heard there was radiation on there, but I didn't I, uh, realize the first it was that spread. I heard tonight that there, was a, that there was an actual British military report. Isn't that what you said, Alan? That there was a British military report yep. talking about radiation? I didn't know yep. that until just now, until tonight. So that's, that's new for me. I would like to know more about that, actually, because I only know, I know a lot about the story. I actually had lunch with the guy who wrote um, Left at Eastgate when he was first publishing it years ago, back in... I guess the end of 1999, maybe 2000, some, somewhere around that, maybe, maybe 1998 or 97 even, I don't know, was it that long ago? It's a pretty long time ago now. I just remember having lunch with him, or brunch here in New York City. Yeah, and, uh, brunch? So, I mean, I've, I've been I've paying attention to that case for never years. Had brunch. I think it's fascinating that, <laughs> who, is it Penniston that, that claims that he had the, 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 the code in his head from touching the ship? I don't know how much credence to put in that, the binary code, but I, I still think Ooh. it's fascinating. Penniston, Sergeant Penniston, isn't that his name? Uh, he, yeah, he, Penniston. He touched, he touched yep. the craft, and he got that uh, binary right. code in his mind, and right. somebody supposedly has now translated part of it into, into a language, into English. I don't know. How, how, do you, how do you translate binary code into English? It came with subtitles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It came, it came uh, with instruction, with instruction yeah. booklet. You know, yeah, I, I, I'm <laughs> speaking of which, by the way, did you know they're rebooting the Greatest American Hero TV series? Yes, no. I heard about that. Yeah, I didn't know that. Wow, well, you know the plot that line. Back. Aliens give this guy a superhero costume. The problem is, is he that with and all the superpowers are in the costume. The problem is, is that he loses the instruction book. He loses yeah. the instructions. Yeah, I forgot about that. Wow. I I love that show growing up. Uh, in fact, uh, William Cat was like a hero to me when I was a kid. Literally, he was oh like yeah, great, great American hero. Too. Yeah. Uh, you know what's funny? Uh, they they were saying. Um, on a report when they, when they mentioned they were going to bring that show back or reboot it, they were like, back then we had uh, William Cat. This time around, let's get Cat Williams. <laughs> How do you think of that? Cat Williams is the greatest American hero. I'm down. I'll watch That'll be that. interesting. That'll be that'd interesting. Be heck, that'd be a heck of a, of a twist, wouldn't it? That would be. Definitely. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, uh, that's another uh, a, a great... Uh, TV series that deals with aliens and uh, you know the media has helped a lot also in feeding this uh, obsession with the whole UFO phenomenon for the last 70 years uh, and it really has started with uh, with Hollywood do you think a lot of uh, the Hollywood movies and stuff that have, that's come out has been like mandated by the government because I have that theory that the government I, got that's together really interesting Hollywood. you mentioned that I was thinking about that earlier tonight I, there's got to be some I, involvement I, I used to be friends with well, I am friends with Catherine Austin Fitz and she was somebody who used to put a lot of stock into movies having to be like secret message uh, uh, carriers that they would be telling us secret facts in the background, like insiders are writing these scripts right. and selling them to Hollywood and they're getting official backing. And that's how these movies are made. And they're telling us things and they're giving us subliminal messages and programming us basically. And, and, and there's other people who are trying to divulge information to the public through these these movies, like Eyes Wide Shut, would be a great example that they're, you know, divulging the secrets of secret societies to the, the public at large. And these are insiders that are giving us this information through fictional storytelling. I don't know how much thought to put into that or not. But sure, some of these scripts are obviously written by people who have experience in, in what they're writing about. That's how, that's how um, Ian Fleming wrote James Bond. He was a spy in World War II. He was in the OSS. He knew about spycraft, so he came up with a spy figure. So obviously some of these stories are probably written by people who have had some kind of experience in what they're talking about. But at the same time, are, are, are some of these movies really being financed intentionally to, to tell us these things, these Secret stories like parables without really telling us that they're telling us parables. They could be. I know that the ONDCP was planting anti-drug messages in mm -hmm. mainstream television programming years ago. Years, yeah. You know, and I'm sure they're, they're still ongoing and using taxpayer money to, to program us 
without telling us that we're paying for our programming. I mean, it's really scary stuff that they do to us. The Pentagon is involved in that stuff. So maybe, maybe they are putting films out that are secretly passing off messages to us and, or, or leading us away from the, the truth. It could go either way, right? Yeah, no, uh, that's the best way to give misinformation. Right. Or just to confuse the field. Hey, let's give them some good right. aliens, some bad aliens, and right. a little bit in between. To, they don't know to, what the heck is going to confuse on. The, to, to confuse the field, absolutely. It's, yeah. Yeah, I think it's much more effective to confuse it, to muddy it up, than it is exactly. to try to completely lead us astray. Yeah. You know, you know, they, they, there's there's also a pattern. Higher. If you look at it, there's a pattern. Like every couple of decades, you'll get hostile aliens, and then you get a while where they're right. like really nice right. aliens. Then you get right. another like decade or so where they're hostile and want to kill the planet. I mean, in right. the 70s and 80s, you had, what, um, the Close Encounters of the Third Kind? Which, do you think they're, they're friendly, or do you, do you think e. aliens are peaceful. friendly, or do you think they're they're aggressive? I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's actually what the movies are telling you. You're going to have your hostile aliens. You're going to have your good okay. aliens. You're going to have your... Look, we have that here on Earth. Uh, you know, you can go right. to any part of this country and you find nice Makes people. You find me. a-holes. You know, you're going to find that diversity here. Why not in space? Right? I think they live. Yeah, that, they live. I saw that in the movie theater when that came out. Wow. They how should remake that, that freak, movie. How bad did that freak you out? My oh. brother and I went. Yeah. Good movie. That movie Good still movie. freaks me out. You know, yeah. speaking of people in Hollywood who are connected to the uh, the inside, Jackie Gleason uh, said uh, years ago that he saw right. ETs, uh, right. and then Nixon, of all people, showed him ETs. <clears throat> right. Now, would Jackie Gleason just say that to make up a story and, and pull our legs? It's possible. But at the same time, it seems like a really off-the-wall story to tell people, doesn't it? Out of all the, the things. Theory. And, of course, his yeah, catchphrase on the, the show. talk about. And, and his catchphrase on the show, of course, was like, one day I was pal, zoom to the moon. Right, right, right. So Ironic, had the right? Interest, right? <laughs> Interesting. The guy was definitely interested in the whole space phenomenon. Preston, mm-hmm. look, we're almost out of time. We're actually running uh, short here. We're going to have a couple more minutes. I want to definitely give you a chance to uh, promote your links, uh, tell anybody uh, where they can catch you, you, you know, if you're going to be at a... Uh, at a convention or anything, please uh, divulge the information uh, so people can follow your work, man. You're, you're definitely a character that I think people should uh, keep in touch with. Right on. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. Um, well, my book is Disinformation Guide to Ancient Aliens, Lost Civilizations, Astonishing Archaeology, and Hidden History. And contributors include Dan Hancock, David Childress, Michael Abutno, Robert Schock, William Corliss, Michael Cremo, Colin Wilson, Ben Donikin and John Anthony West, among many, many others. I uh, can be found on Facebook slash Facebook, bleh, Facebook.com slash Preston P or WordPress.com slash Preston P. Is that what it is? Or Preston P at WordPress. I don't know. If you Google my name, I'm really <laughs> easy to find. That, that, that's usually what I tell people. Google Preston P, P-E-E-T. Um, I'm all over the internet. Um, I don't have any appearances coming up on conventions, but I'm always open to invitations. So if anybody out there wants to invite me, I'm I'm, I'm free and free and easy. <laughs> what what are your travels? Uh, where are your travels going to take you in the near future? Because I know you're you're working probably on something. Are you editing another book? Are you uh, researching I'm, anything I'm, at the moment? I'm working on a couple of different projects at the moment, but things are kind of up in the air at the moment. I'm trying to figure out exactly what I want to do. I'm I'm working on a project with another friend another ancient cultures project, but it's it's in its first stages at the moment. Um, but you know, things things change from day to day. I may I may have something completely new on the table tomorrow. I'm not sure. We'll see what, what, what tomorrow brings. Juggling is yeah. not a bad thing. No can I hope right. you, you listen to the show on October twenty ninth that we're gonna have a, a very interesting guest on Michael Heiser is gonna be on with us. Uh, he is the person who debunked Zachariah Sitchin, uh, the, yep. in, the entire Anunnaki theory. He debunked oh, it. I would like to hear him, definitely. Um, he's definitely also like part him. of the uh, the Ancient Aliens debunked uh, DVD or documentary. Um, he, a lot of his work is what they're referencing in that documentary. In fact, he is right in on. the documentary as well. Uh, he's going to be our guest on the show here. And uh, really, one of the, like he's one of those guests that I've been wanting to get on the show for at least a couple of years now. Fascinating uh, person. Uh, you know, just looking at what he put out there and researching it myself blew mm-hmm. my mind away. I mean, it really did because a lot of the stuff that he talked about was so on the money. When you do your own homework, that's the key here. Do your own research. Do your own homework. Right. Don't take things at face value and just right. let somebody like uh, Van Daniken or David Icke or one of these because guys say, Because there is plenty of evidence. It. 
there is plenty of evidence for visitation, and there's plenty of things that point towards the idea that, okay, maybe there is something to these stories, but not all of those stories point Correct. to visitation. Correct. So it, you're right. It's, it's, it's good to be discerning, and that's mm-hmm. what I always try to do with all of my work. I want my readers to read it for themselves. If, if, the, if the story that was given to me for my book was well-researched and well-argued and well-cited, I was perfectly willing to publish it. Whether I believe it or not, because I want my readers to make up their minds. I want them to do the research. You know, there's, like I said at the beginning of the show, there's 50 sides to every story, not just one or two. You know, so it, it's good to have as many viewpoints out there as possible. So that we can look at the things that are wrong and say, no, that's wrong, and know to look for those in the future. You know, if you use that as a source, we know that your, your research is pretty fallacious. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So uh, please, uh, hopefully you're listening to that show. It should definitely be an interesting show with Michael. I will. Uh, guys, I will. we're all out of time. Uh, Preston, thank you so much again for being on the show. Here yeah, absolutely. Great talking thank to you. you. Thank you, guys. Alan, good, good to meet you. Peace and love, guys. Happy night. Be Take well. care, Preston. Uh, guys, that's been the great Preston Pete. Again, follow his work. And if you guys want to uh, get to his links and you don't know exactly how to do it, you can't remember his name or whatever, go to skywatchersradio.com. The podcast will be there within 10 minutes after the show is over. Uh, we're all out of time, though. It's been fun. We'll be back next week. Good night, yeah, everybody. Excellent. Stay classy.